In this lesson, we are going to look at how to save an Excel file that contains macros. We have a choice of two extension formats, .xlsm and .xlsp. There is also the option of a hidden file called the personal workbook where we can store macros that we use often. Saving a file is not just about the file type, but also about the location. We will talk about trust center settings that we need to be aware of. And while we are on the topic of security, we will also check out how to lock our VBA project so that no one else can access our code within the VBA editor. Here, we have a brand new unsaved Excel file with one recorded macro. And we want our macro to be available the next time we open this file. So let's go to File. We can choose Save or Save As. Browse to the location where you want to save it. Now the question here is, what format should we use to save our Excel file? We can't use a traditional .xlsx file format for saving macros. Let's try saving it as an Excel workbook anyways, which is the .xlsx format. So let's click save and we get a message prompting us to save the file with the .xlsm extension. Let's go back and change the file type to macro enabled workbook, which has a .xlsm extension. And we can go ahead and save this file. And what would have happened if we had ignored the warning and tried to save the file with the traditional .xlsx extension? In that case, the VBA project would be completely deleted and we would have lost the macro that we had created. And is the .xlsm format the only format to save our Excel files? No, we can save the file as an Excel binary workbook with a .xlsp extension. And it is my preferred format for saving macro files. The main advantage of a binary workbook over a macro enabled workbook is that .xlsp file sizes are much smaller. So here we have an Excel file with some data. It is just one across a lot of columns and a lot of rows. And what I've done is I've saved the file using a .xlsm format and a .xlsp format. The binary workbook is just 4 MB, which is less than 10% of the macro enabled workbook. So .xlsp files compress data better and are more efficient for storage. And they also load and save faster. If you intend on building macros that contain large Excel data sets, I would recommend saving them in the .xlsp format. Now let's try and open the file that we had just saved. If you open an Excel file that contains macros, you will probably see the security warning with a yellow bar stating that macros have been disabled. And if you trust the source of the file, then you can click on the enable content button. And now you'll be able to run the macros within the file. In fact, this file has now become a trusted document. So the next time you open the file, the yellow bar will not appear again. And let's check out where the setting has been configured. We'll go to the developer tab and hit the macro security button and come to macro settings. We can see four options and our radio button should have the second option selected. Let's check out each option from top to down. The first option disables all macros without notification. So similar to what we have now, but we won't even see the warning message. That's not ideal. The second is disable with notification. That is our current setting. The third is to allow digitally signed macros. This is where the owner of the macro would have gotten a digital certificate from the right authority and would have added it to the project. When we receive the file, Microsoft will authenticate the certificate and enable the file accordingly. This is more for professional developers who sell add-ins and macros. And the last is to enable all macros. This is not a secure option and not recommended as well. Let's talk about security of a macro file. Why do we need to be concerned with this? A macro with the right code has the ability to interact with your computer file system. So suppose you receive an Excel macro file from an external source, example, a macro file downloaded from the internet, there is the possibility that a virus or other malicious code has been packaged into the macro. And if we select the fourth option in the macro settings, we could potentially set macros to run automatically when a file is opened. This poses a security risk and the macro settings in the trust center can act as a deterrent. So our current security setting is disable all macros with a notification. However, if you're faced with clicking this enable macro button each time you open a macro file, it can get quite annoying. The alternative would be to designate a folder location on your computer as a trusted location and place any new micro file there. And now when you open a macro file from within that location, 
you will not get this warning message. So let's check out how to set it up. Go to the developer tab, micro security, choose trusted locations and click on add a new location. Click on browse to go to the location that you want to add. I'm going to choose the VBA masterclass folder, click OK. And you can check the option to include subfolders within this location as well. Click OK. And we can see the location has been added to a list of trusted locations and click OK. I'm going to take another file with a macro. Let's first cut and paste it on a desktop. I'm going to open the file and we get the warning message because the desktop was not a trusted location. We can close the file and we'll cut and paste it in the VBA masterclass folder. And now we'll open it. And this time we don't see the warning message. Suppose that we have code that we could use all the time across different projects. Can we access the same macros from different VBA projects or do we need to paste the code into a new project each time? The answer is yes, we can access the same macro from different projects. We would need to save our macro in the personal macro workbook, which is a hidden file that can be accessed whenever we run the Excel application. Let's do a demo. Let's click on cell A1, go to the developer tab, record macro, give the macro a name. And in the store macro dropdown list, select personal macro workbook. By default, the personal macro workbook doesn't exist yet. It will be created when you save a macro in the personal macro workbook for the very first time. And you will also need to close all the open workbooks. So first let's click OK. Let's change the background color of the selected cell and stop recording. Let's save and close this Excel file. And we get a notification asking whether we want to save the changes to the personal macro workbook. Click save. In the back end, our personal macro workbook has been created. Technically, the personal macro workbook has been created in the Excel start folder and you can search for it on your computer. For example, in my case, my personal macro workbook has been created and saved in the Excel start folder. OK, let's open a new Excel file. Let's click on cell D2. This is a new file, but we want to run the macro that we had created earlier in the previous file. So let's go to developer tab macros. We can see the previous macro is available for us to run. We can click run and the action is performed. We can directly access the macros saved in the personal workbook. Let's go to the VBA editor, click Alt F11. And we can see the VBA project for the personal workbook here as well. Let's expand it, go down to modules, click on the module and we can see the macro that we had recorded. If you want to modify the code in the personal macro workbook, we can do it from within the VB editor. Now the caveat with personal macro workbook is that we can access macros stored in it only from Excel files that we opened on our computer. But what if we want our colleagues or clients to use the macro or utility that we have created? And by macro, I am just referring to the macro code and not the macro file. Well, in this case, we could create an Excel add-in, save it in a shared location and ask the user to load it onto their Excel application. Here is a simple example of an Excel add-in that I've loaded onto my Excel application. It is just a function which adds two numbers and notice the extension of the add-in is .xlam and both the add-in and the personal macro workbook will load each time we create a new Excel file. We will study about add-ins in detail in a future lesson. And the final topic for today is protecting the VBA project itself. Sometimes you may want to restrict viewing access to the code that you have created within a project. A use case would be that we simply don't want a user to be able to modify the code as it may compromise the performance of the original macro. We could protect our project such that we need a password to view the code. To add a password, right click on the project name. Then go to its properties, click on the protection tab, place a tick mark against the checkbox for lock project for viewing, type in a password, confirm the password and click OK. For the changes to take effect, we need to save and close the file. Let's do that. Save, close the VB editor, close the Excel file. Let's open it again. Go to the VB editor, Alt F11. Let's minimize the add-in. Our VBA project for the Excel file is the first one out here. It's collapsed at the moment. Let's click the plus sign against it. 
and we are prompted for a password. We can enter our password, click OK, and now we can access our code. One big caveat here, it is possible to crack these passwords. The code for doing so is readily available online. Hence, locking projects shouldn't be treated as a security option, rather a mere suggestion that the user is not supposed to alter the code. And that brings us to the end of this lesson and also the end of the first chapter. In this chapter, we learned about the environment in which macros are created, saved and consumed. In the next chapter, we will learn about the rules for interacting with Excel through VBA.